All right, folks, I wanted to wrap this up here and kind of talk through what we did. Um, so I'm gonna drop pictures of the piglets and of the two sows uh, here in the video immediately following this talk. Um, we did oatmeal and biscuit, just to reiterate, I'll get pictures of them. They were two of my favorite sows. Um, we wound up, they didn't have as awesome of litters as they had in the past. Um, so that's really what I'm, you kind of never know what you're going to get, right? You can have great sows and good boars and still sometimes wind up with litters that just aren't fantastic. Um, I've had litters out of them that have been wonderful. I've got, got to keep, got to select back several to be able to sell as breeders. Um, but this time we were real low. Uh, that was one boar and one gilt out of oatmeal. And then out of biscuit, um, we wound up only keeping back two boars. Uh, that one that I made notes of there in the video, I wound up castrating yesterday. Yesterday was Wednesday. So we went back through, I went out and caught him and you know, I'd been watching him for uh, the two days since that we had done the first evaluations there. And you know what, I just didn't really, I didn't like my decision. So went ahead and just castrated him. Um, I think that's probably for the best. I didn't really like, I just kept watching him out in the yard and you know, it's not just didn't seem to be the same. Um, I got a, I got a picture of it. I'll see if I can't drop that here as well um, to show you what that looked like. Just kind of at a few different angles. I just really, he looks fine in the camera when you held him up there, but honestly, just in person at a lot of different angles, I'm just, I'm not confident that it's going to have the turn up that it needs to. Um, and I would rather go ahead and cast, especially with a male, I would rather just go ahead and castrate and and be done with it and make sure that the males I'm kicking out are of a better quality. We really want, so a male is half of your herd, right? You're going to have between two or a minimum, you know, one, if you just have a breeding pair, that's fine. But at least one, two, up to eight, you know, sows that are paired with this one boar. So he's at minimum, you know, that 50%, but he's, his genetics go to all of those litters, every litter that he's going to sire with all of those different sows. So you really need to be picky with your boars. Um, and I'm hoping by going ahead and castrating that, I've shown that. Um, yeah, and even though out of these litters we did get more boars than gilts, um, I rather would not have, but out of our other litters, um, we wound up saving more gilts than boars. Uh, the litters you didn't get to see me evaluate, the other two litters I did this year, so or this season. Um, yeah, we had one we didn't evaluate because it was small enough and just I'm retaining one and that's it. Um, and then the other we had a sow not take. Uh, she'd had an injury last last spring that a sow got after her and I'm pretty confident that's what it was, but it was a sow that I needed to, I needed to cull anyway, so it was okay. I didn't cull her. Um, she had a real long snout. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's kind of it for that. Um, I didn't want, I know I'm going to get several questions for castration stuff. Um, so we did record the castrations, um, all except for this last one that I just decided to run out and get and do. Uh, so we're a little concerned with throwing castration videos and um, even farrowing videos and things like that that are slightly more graphic in nature um, up on YouTube and running the risk of getting our channel shut down or just flagged or anything like that. Um, so what we've decided is that we're going to start a Patreon and we'll be putting up all of those videos into a Patreon. I won't set the paywall very high for those videos. Um, we just want to try to be able to make it to where it's still accessible, right? It'll just be a couple bucks a month. That's it. And I will make sure that it's worth your while. I'll make sure to be dropping something in there that's accessible for you and um, we will have some higher paying tiers uh, that'll have some more benefits We're still trying to figure out what all benefits we want 
We'll also be throwing our yoga videos on there. The longer ones, we'll be doing shorter ones here on the channel. And then we'll be throwing some longer ones weekly on the Patreon. Um, so hopefully, you know, we get some merging of those audiences. I teach yoga and practice yoga and castrate pigs. So folks, uh, you can too, don't worry. <laughs> Uh, and I know, I know a few different IVB farmers that practice yoga. That makes me super, super happy. Um, we as farmers need to make sure that we take care of our bodies because uh, we beat the heck out of them farming. So, um, sorry, getting a little off topic there. Yeah, so we'll have the Patreon up. I will get that castration video uploaded on there. I hope to try to have the Patreon done within a week or so um, and available for everybody to start accessing. I'll drop the link in this video when we have it, and I'll probably drop it in that intro video as well since we mentioned the idea of doing one there. Um, and any other videos that become relevant. So yeah, uh, this video is not going to be that long uh, after we get through with these pictures. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. I will have this out before the IPVBA show, uh, but remember that you can go to the show and you can watch me do this in person. You can ask me direct questions as I'm doing it. Hopefully you'll be able to answer your questions a little better. And uh, on that also, if you're an IPVBA member, Idaho Pasture Pig Breed Association, you can find them on Facebook, um, on Instagram. If you're a member and you're not going to be able to make it to the show or you become a member and couldn't make it to the show, that video that will be recorded and that will be posted and saved onto the website. So you'll be able to access that from the website. You know, you won't be able to ask questions during, right, which would be super, super helpful. Um, that show is in Croton, Ohio. It's June 10th, 11th, and 12th. The Piglet eval will be Friday the 10th in the evening. Um, I think it's supposed to be somewhere around 6 or 7 p.m. Um, so yeah. Alrighty, folks. Uh, keep watching so that we can, uh, you can see pictures of those adults. Um, and then, you know, it really does help when people subscribe and like our videos. Um, and then if you find the content useful, please share it with your friends, get the word out there. We're really hoping to, to see enough impact um, and engagement from the community to show us that this is worth our time. You know, we're very busy people and don't have a ton of time to devote to this kind of stuff. But uh, we really want to be able to help other breeders and folks that are starting out with their homestead or farm be successful. We need more small farmers in the world. So thank you. Alrighty, so to start this off here, let's actually look at some of these close-up pictures of these piglets first. Um, since the first three videos there came out, I talked with a couple of friends who watched them um, that are some breeders I very, very highly respect. Um, and they had noticed there weren't as many close-ups of the uh, breed quality ones as they would have liked to at least focus in on that snout and see some of the things that I was seeing there in person that I could have elaborated just a little bit better on. Um, so let's go ahead and do that here, focusing on this first piglet. So this one is this ginger uh, barrow that we did with the two waddles. Um, looking back at that, that line I was talking about, and now this one, the way he's got his back kind of arched up, he's making that line a little bit more pronounced, but we can still see it, right? If I were to lay a ruler, and this is a this is a method to make sure I give credit here. This is a method I got from Chantiel Sniff over at Sniff Ranch in Oklahoma, um, and she's the one who pointed out, for the most like, she's the one who pointed out the not focusing long enough on those and would like to see that more. So I'd really like to go ahead and touch on that. I think she's absolutely right. So with this one, think if we were to lay a ruler from the tip of his nose up there to between the ears we would almost get a straight line. You'd see little bitty gaps right here. He's got a light, little tiny little bump there and the nose has kind of a little bump up, but not enough that you're really gonna see any serious airspace there, right? Um, so that's gonna be kind of, I've never seen one and this is something even, like this is why Chantille said it to me. It was kind of just one of those like face palm moments of, well, duh, that makes total sense. Why didn't I think of that? Um, we've never seen one that if you can do that, it's not going to turn up like you're going to pretty much have that longer snout. You'll get, it may, it may not look like, you know, a traditional hog for sure. Um, but it's not gonna, it's not going to look like what we're looking for. You're never going to get enough turn up that it turns into a good hog. 
of all the times that, you know, sometimes snouts can really frustrate us experienced breeders because you'll get one and you're like, oh yeah, that should look good. And then it just kind of straightens out. Uh, and sometimes you'll get one that you think is just a smidgen long and it curves more than you would expect later. And it's already in the barrel pin and it's kind of is what it is. Um, I've never seen one that had a line like this turn that direction. It's always that middle and quality ones that go one way or the other. So like this next one here, right here, um, that we talked about, this is that one that I went ahead and went back and castrated. Um, and yeah, you can see where I've got my finger there. He, he's got a little bit of a dip. Um, we'll go ahead and hop to the next picture here, which is still him. This is still that same piglet. So we can see that he's got a little bit of a dip, right? Just a little bit. And it, it could go one way or the other. He's got a little bit of a wrinkle, but honestly, like, I think some of this is that angle at which he's just sitting there, uh, which is what I was evaluating off of when I was looking at snout. You can see I'm, I'm looking right at the camera. Um, so I'm looking at that video screen and evaluating his snout, and I probably shouldn't have. Um, like I said, sometimes in pictures, it's really hard to get a true image of what this thing looks like. If we go ahead and hop to the next picture here, we can see this is what I kept getting pictures of him. And now sometimes it's hard when you're taking pictures to get a good picture or even sometimes a lot of times they just look bad in pictures and that's, that's fine. So that's just the angle, but this is a real good, like straight on the side. Um, you can see those ears line up almost perfectly. There's no angle one way or the other. Oftentimes when we have that issue with images, it's a slight angle one way or the other that adjusts the quality of uh, what you're looking at. With this guy, we can see that if we place it there, there's gonna be a slight air gap, but I'm worried that it's not gonna be enough. Um, honestly, if he does much, I think he'll wind up turning out like his dad, which we'll see a picture of later, which his, his dad's not bad. Um, there's just not as much upturn as I would like. So I'm, I still liked his father, still sold him as a breeder because he, he had a lot going on for him in other ways. Um, and his snout was not bad. Like, I'm not trying to diss his snout. It's just not not exactly what I would like to keep going and it could go one way or the other. So it could turn out like his dad. I doubt it's going to turn out like his mom. Um, so, which is Biscuit, we'll get to here in just a minute. I'm more thinking that this is going to turn out a little bit longer than I would like. And you know what? It's just not worth the risk of me having to replace it. So I would rather sell him as a barrow. And so that's what we've done. We castrated him. Um, yeah. So then let's move on to one that like, is a little bit better. So this is one we did keep. So now if we go ahead and drop a ruler here, you're gonna see, and it's, it'd be easier if I could draw on these, but it's, I need to go ahead and download some new software for this. We can see just a slightly bit better of a little air gap. You can see that more pronounced ridge on the face here where the eyes kind of bump up and then it drops down, comes to the snout. We can see a nice wrinkle. I wish I could go ahead and zoom in again. I, I've got to get some slightly better software if I'm going to be doing this more seriously. But uh, we've got a slightly better bump here on the nose. And that's just, that's more so what we're looking for. That nice rounded face. Um, and we'll look at a picture of him too when he's standing. Um, I've got it a little bit further back, but I wanted to kind of touch on this. And then we're honestly going to just go ahead and hit all the piglets I saved back as breeder piglets. I've got their pictures of them. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do that after we look at these parents first. So looking here, we've got, uh, this is the mother of the first litter we did. This is oatmeal. And you can see that she's got that nice flat dish to the forehead, um, and her nose actually at the end curves up at the tip. There's, it's not just flat and then done and shooting out. And I know it's some of it looks like it's just because she's just walking. So we've got some pictures of her standing there. But you can see an actual turn up to the tip of the snout there. Um, I, I really, really like that. So now we'll look at her just standing here. Um, and it, you can really see that kind of like that deep angle between the bridge of the nose and the snout tip. Um, and then the mother also here, you can see we've got, and this was, 
Um, I want to say 10 or so days before she pharaohed. So this is something her and her mother both do. They carry those piglets really high up. Um, some of my other sows, they'll really dangle to the ground. Um, and you'll see that with Biscuit, because hers is three days before farrowing. But look at those hams rounding along the back. Pretty well flat top line, even though she's looking up. Um, if you look at those front arms, just nice and straight down there. Nice triangle shape. This is really... This is what I'm looking for in my herd as far as that general structure goes and what I'm hoping to put out in piglets. Um, we've got another one of her here from the on the side as she's lying down. You can really get it. This is when she was a bit younger uh, before she'd had any litters yet. And so you can see that this is probably seven, eight months old, I believe. Um, you can see it still does that. It angles back. That nose nice and rounds up. That nice flat to the forehead. But you can see how much it changes from, in the video, she's probably 18-ish months old or so. This picture, she's, um, she's like I said, somewhere around 8-ish months old, 7, 8 months. So I think this was right before I threw her into breed. Um, somebody wanted to dig back through all of our Facebook and Instagram posts. You could probably find this picture and find when it was taken and figure out her age. Um, but it's, for our purposes, it's, it's fine. Um... So then let's hop over to the other mother, Miss Biscuit, here. Uh, in both of these videos, um, and that picture where uh, Oatmeal is posing was from the virtual show that the IPPBA did. So thought that they would fit real great here. Now this one, um, you can kind of see... So she's actually only three days away from farrowing out 11 piglets. And so she's really struggling to walk around. She's got a lot of babies in there. She's real close to popping. Um, but you can see a lot of those same things that I'm talking about with that snout, especially when we look here in that still photo. It's the same thing, right? Super flat dished forehead. That snout comes out. And then that nose turns up right there at the end. Um, and then we can see the same thing. Now she's riding a little low in her pasterns in this picture. You can see that both on the front and back. But some of that is just the timing of when I snapped it. Um, and a lot of it is just because she's a three or four year old sow here. This was last fall, four or five maybe then. Um, and three days away from farrowing 11 piglets. So she's got a lot of extra weight on her. It doesn't look like this is what I'm saying. She carries those piglets way high up in her. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of weight on her legs. Tendons are starting to get a little bit loose as she's getting ready to farrow. She doesn't normally ride that low in her legs. Um, but this is a lot of the things we're looking for. Still nice round ham. Her tail could be a little higher up, but I'm also going to attribute just a little bit of that to angle and... Uh, and just being so close to farrowing. Um, we've got another one here. You can see she does carry a little bit more weight than I wish she did. Um, nice and round at the face. This is a litter prior to that. So this was probably three years old, two to three years old, somewhere around there. Um, and she's just a rounder, bigger gal. Um, it's not all fat. Like I've got some sows that kind of just look like Kuni Kuni shape-ish. Like they're just round and fat no matter what I do. Um, not horrible, but not as nice as what uh, she can look like if she were to thin up a little bit. And what her daughter looks like. Her daughter's got that nice, beefy, muscular build. And that's what I really want to see um, in our piglets going forwards. And then we'll look here at the father. So this is pants. Very beautiful tricolor. Um, you can't really tell a whole lot from this front angle. So let's hop to the next angle. Um, and it turns out I just could not track down on my phone enough of the photos of him to be able to share over to my computer. I don't know what the deal was going on with there. Uh, but you can see here where it kind of, his, he's got the dish in the front, right? But it's just this flat, flat straight out line here. And that's, so there's not as much upturn. It almost kind of domes a little. Um, and it's not bad. Like I said, it's still perfectly acceptable. Um, I think his face looks a lot like the pig that's on the registry's uh, little icon at the top. So definitely not complaining um, in any form or fashion, but it just makes it a little harder to get that upturn. Um, and his half sister has a super smashed face. So it's the genetics for it are definitely there. Um, <clears throat> 
but he's got that wide body, very, very wide body, to be honest. Dude is built like a like a little tank. It's a little more Kuni Kuni. We can see that his belly rides a little low down here, um, and it's wide and flat across. That's a very Kuni Kuni thing. It's not a tight, high up belly um, like oatmeal or biscuit really have when they're nice and standing, um, but it's it's still fine. Now let's hop over to the piglets that we decided to go ahead and choose. So these ones, I didn't get the pictures, so we're going to start with some not my favorite types of pictures to be able to send to customers. Um, those first two, like I said in that other video, I forgot to get pictures of these guys before releasing them um, from Oatmeal's Litter. So I had to run out and grab some to try to send to them. I don't like just sending, I really want some side shots of these. But these are those two we chose from Oatmeal. This is how I like to label uh, guilt, then the ear tag, oat, 019, date of birth. Sometimes we'll throw teat count in there. I probably should have on this one because of the way the angle is, um, but I'm more than happy to tell people when they ask. Um, and, and you'll see how I prefer to send those pictures here in just a minute. Um, next up, this one, even, I don't even have three pictures of that one, although the three pictures of that other little guilt weren't really fantastic either. Managed to kind of get a side shot on him, just like we kind of got a side shot on her. Um, I would much rather, and I will wind up sending the customers some better, as they're waiting for the next couple weeks, they'll get some better videos and pictures and updates of their piglets, so that'll be fine. Um, here's that one that I was holding. Um, we can see the little dot on his nose, so I know it's the same one, um, and the big circle on the arm. So this is Biscuit 029 here. Um, you can see that, first off, that snout, just look at it in some of these pictures when he's getting to stand by himself. That is just very, very rounded in that face. You can see that super dish on this left picture up top. Um, if we were to put a ruler, there would be a good bump and gap. Um, yeah, and then looking at that top line, I love being able to include pictures of this top line like this, seeing how wide and barbell shaped he is here. Nice round hams. Like I could draw a circle where the hams are, draw a circle where those shoulders are, and then have a little bit of an indent along that. I love that. That's the kind of muscling that we want to see. Let's hop onto that next one. Um, and he's, he, you can see he's kind of got that, he was turning to the side and I just, I had about four pictures of him and they were all moving. So this was kind of the best I could get for that one. But same thing on this dude. He's got that gap that you'll see if you were to throw a ruler from the tip of the nose, especially in this right picture, you can really see it. If we were to put one there, I mean, I could cram a finger or two in that gap. Um, yeah, let's roll on to that next one here. So this is what I like to send people. Okay. This is my preferred picture format. Um, we've got an underlined picture. We've got, um, what is that? Right side body, left side body and overhead. This is what I want to see. I do not always manage to get it. Um, and I love this year we started doing this. Uh, we hadn't been doing it before. This is just a plywood back, plywood floor, and then the three sides of Plexi. Um, and then I can fit my phone, just hold it inside that and get those pictures. Um, I still get plenty of light from the three sides. I really like this. And so far I haven't had one leap out. Um, it is about 16 inches tall, 12 inches tall, something like that. Um, I'm really liking that so far. Uh, not all the piglets enjoy it. Uh, some kind of get freaked out like that one. I just said I couldn't get him to stand still. Sometimes they're just like, oh, but for the most part, I'm seeming to get some pretty decent pictures out of it. I wish some of them would stand a little bit better right to the back, but, um, yeah. So this boar was from Dottie. So this isn't one of the litters you guys got to see evaluated. Um, we've got a nice little dish to the snout here. You can especially see it in this lower left hand picture. Nice, low, and round. And you can see what I was talking about, about those angles sometimes messing up your pictures um, in this top right-hand picture. It looks a little funky there, but when you see it over in this other picture, you can you can definitely make out that shorter snout, that little dish, some nice pronounced wrinkles right there. Um, you've got pretty good underline here. Nothing really to complain about for sure. Um, and then those nice barbell shapes on that body. Let's bump to this next one. Uh, so this is a little guilt here and you can see, I don't see as much of a turn up per se, 
There is definitely still one there, uh, but she's angled down the way she's dipping into those elbows in that lower left-hand picture. And that's kind of frustrating. I couldn't get her to really do a whole lot else than that. Um, definitely made her back hands look nice for sure, which you can see in uh, both of these side profile pictures, still nice hams. Um, but there's a lot of very pronounced wrinkles in this now, so I'm, I'm confident that one's gonna turn up and look nice in that overhead, even though she's right up against the wall, so those shadows hide the one side, we can still see that pronounced barbell shape. Um, underline is pretty nice looking through there. And then here we've got this other bore. Uh, same thing, he did scratch himself on the belly there before being caught, so that was wonderful, right? Um, but we can see that same dish through the snout. If I were to put a ruler across the top, I'd get that nice little gap there. Nice barbell shape in this overhead picture. I just love that, right? And he's even got he's got a little bit of a triangle at the front here. Not bad. That's gonna look that's gonna look good. I'm gonna be happy to see how this one turns out. Um, and then still that same format. And so this lets me know who the mother is, right? And then they're numbering. And that's why I like doing that ear tagging system that way, which if you saw the last video, then you know how that is. Um, yeah, let's keep moving on. I'm, I know I'm eating up a lot of you guys' time, but these are all three from this litter. This is the only three I wound up doing from this litter. Um, and that's fine. I'm, I'm content with three. Uh, this next batch here, we got four out of it, and it was a litter of 12. So that was much nicer. That's about where I would like to be. That's about 25%. Um, and I felt good with it. I felt pretty confident with most of these. Um, we've got overhead. You can see he's a little bit longer, um, which his mom is a little smaller. Uh, so it, I, I liked seeing that length. I've still got that barbell, though it's not as crazy as some of those others that are a little beefier. His mom's not crazy beefy, so I'm not surprised to see that. But we still got that barbell shape. Um, you can see that nose. He's definitely got that line. Um Pretty good on the teats lines there. Um, those back two teats are nice and wide spaced. I really like seeing that. This is another one that I saw that in that I'd mentioned in the video. Um, you saw on some of those previous ones that are a little close to the back, they're pretty close and down at the back is standard. So this is, I like seeing this on, oh, sorry, guilt her, seeing this on her. Um, and then we're gonna go to this one. So another one, I missed the top line picture on this one. I like that snout. You've got that same turn. Nice shape. And then we do have some funky stuff going on with the teats here. And this one, because it was still 7-7, uh, seven, seven, I went ahead and kept it. Um, it's just, it's uneven, but with everything else going on with this piglet that I like, she had a nice build. She still had 7-7 seven, seven teats, and I would rather have 7 Nice functioning teats, so 14 overall teats. There's no pins in here. Then having them, there was no, like, yeah. I would much, much rather have that. Have that full seven, even if they're not even, so that I can continue to build. Like, if I had my options, of, to put this in a better way for you, if I had six, six, perfectly even, or seven, seven, with no pins lined up, I'm going to go with that seven, seven, even if they're funky because that's two more functional teats to be able to feed piglets with. And, you know, I get litters of 14, or better yet, even if it's still only a litter of 12, that means I have two more high up teats that aren't those hind teats producing milk. So there's a better chance of those piglets moving to a front teat and getting more milk, because while those hind teats do produce, they don't produce as much as those more front facing teats, um, or front oriented, you know, teats, the ones higher up. So this just gives them a better chance of those piglets filling out. I would, and if I can manage to get, you know, um, 16 and 18, I'd even prefer that. So yeah, let's roll on here. Um, and now this one, we did wind up with a pin. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same thing though, I've got that nice spacing at the back that I really like on those back teats. Um, but we did have one pin in here but she had everything else rolling for her that I liked. And most of the rest are nice and lined up even. So sometimes when you get a pin, it throws everything off. It really only threw off these two lineups across that have that pin right there at the navel um, over on that left side. So I was pretty content with that. Um, while I still want 
I want as nice of underlines as possible. I'm not that upset with 7-7 seven, seven with one pin. So, and that nice spacing down at the bottom. Because she has that nice build, we can see that straight down leg here on that lower picture. Um, riding real high up on those pasterns. She's got that nice snout, nice set of wrinkles we can see in this top picture. And, and the lower to extent, but we can really see them there very pronounced in that bottom one. Um, and those nice rounded hands in that back one. I just, yeah, liked her build. And then the last one we're going to look at real quick here. Um, and there is this customer's name. I threw it on there because this was their option. Um, so this is what I'll start doing on my phone um, in my notes is that I will then start throwing people's names on the bottom. And I'm not going to give you their first names, obviously. Um, I don't want to call them out uh, or anything. But this is the board that they're going to get from me. This helps my note taking. Um, so when I look back at it in the future, I can immediately go, okay, so this is the one they got. And I can compare this picture to when they in the future send me pictures of their pig. Right, that makes versus me going. Oh well, who got that pick? Did it look like it's there? It's in my notes, so I can look back years from now when I see that pick as an adult and be like, well, what did it look it's like? Like it's a piglet. I've got that. Their name is on there. Um, and same thing. I really like. He's got those wrinkles on his snout. You can see that roll to the nose from the forehead up. Um, nice build. And then uh, as far as that belly, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's got that 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, there were a couple things on this one that looked funny. Like, he looked like he had a pin there, but there's not. Um, you can see how they're still tight together. It's just some dirt. This whole back litter here, they all ran through the mud right before I got these pictures. So you can even kind of see on this bottom one how it looks like maybe he's got... And they had, they had mentioned some concern that, oh, has he had con conjunctivitis before, which is like pink eye. Um, no, he hasn't. He just... And you can see it on his ears, too. He had a ton of mud. Um, they all ran right through the wallow right before I caught them. It's what I get for trying to get pictures at midday and evaluate. Uh, it was hot. It was like 85 or 88 that day. Um, so you can still see he's got crusty mud around the ears and some around this eye. I managed, and you can see some on his back here too. Um, I managed to wipe them down with a towel before doing some of these, but I obviously missed some. Um, and I know that's what it is. I've seen him every day. I've been looking at him. It's it's not there's anything wrong with him. He's just muddy in these pictures. Um, we can see that pronounced barbell shape there. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think that's gonna that's gonna roll with it. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch these videos. I really hope you guys find some benefit and use out of these. It really helps us out if you hit that like and subscribe button. Um, the subscribe for sure is super helpful. It may not seem like it, but it is. Um, and then I did go ahead and record the castration videos like I talked about. So I've got those all recorded. I'll edit those up. And then hopefully this week we can throw up a Patreon. So on that Patreon, you know, you'll be able to see castration videos. That's where we'll put videos of farrowing. Um, I think we'll try to record as many of those as possible, even though... You know, like we don't, we really hate putting videos and updates as farrowing is happening because the things happen, right? And then trying to deal with the general populace that doesn't understand farming um, and the complexities and, you know, the inherent risks of childbirth on social media. Um, but that's something that I think you as people who are willing to watch that and pay for that on Patreon, um, that kind of narrows down that audience to folks who actually want to see those things and have an understanding of that process we'll get benefit out of so we'll throw those on there too and again that's not going to be a very high paywall at all a couple dollars a month um and then we'll have the yoga up there too and i hope we're going to come up with a few other things whether that's you know pork sent to you at a higher thing to taste or other farm products we're going to start making large soap again stuff like that um we'll start including in as some some extra perks of being some of those higher paid Patreon members. Um, 